What's going on, friends? Hope you're doing amazing. It's your captain of the candlestick, Mr. Jeremy Alexander Newsom. That is me speaking in third person, which is really dumb to do. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying your Friday. In this video, we're simply discussing and looking back at a previous trade that a trader did and talk about it, learn from it, talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the pros and the cons. Take that information and apply it for future trades. Let's dive in together. You rock. Hey traders, welcome to your Friday trade review. This is where I go in and look at a specific trade that some traders placed, specifically getting in, getting out, and kind of talking through the pros, the cons, the good and the bad, the beautiful and the ugly. We're gonna talk about one that was posted by my good friends and gentleman, scholar, Mr. Blake Anderson uh, playing Dell bullish. And we're gonna talk about why he played it bullish, how it looks, why he got in, how he played it, how he got out. So let's kind of dive in on this particular trade. This is a trade that he posted at 12.55 p.m. in the afternoon. And Dell could have a potential run into close with it holding up better now after push through 50. It could get a multiple time frame break. So let's just kind of go look at it. First and foremost, what he was noticing on Dell was you can see that the stock came down, right? So first of all, it gapped up. Let me draw on here. So it gapped up this morning. Huh, why can't I draw? Is that better? Okay. So it gapped up this morning and you can see it was a retest gap, right? White candle gapping up. So the retest gap, gapped up, retested big, pulled back, but it kept getting lower shadows. And what he probably noticed was the last time it made a new low, which was right here, right? it broke down and then it popped. And then it broke down and maybe it would pop. So he played this trade almost purely off of just risk reward. This was a 30 minute time frame, and he was just noticing very small candle here, very small candle here, and he took this with a relatively, it looks like a small stop, but it really wasn't. It was less than a dollar, so you couldn't have it even tighter knowing Blake. Probably did this one still as a little bit of a, just a cushionary, cautionary tale. Cushionary and cautionary tale uh, to kind of determine what most likely was going to occur. But uh, this was a really good setup. So let's go kind of look at Dell on a smaller time frame, like a 15 minute or five minute and just kind of see what he saw. So here's a five minute and let me change this from raindrops to regular candles. Um, let's go to, give me just a moment. I'm gonna pull it up from the raindrop to regular candles. So this is the raindrops. Let's just do good old regular candles here for a moment. All right, so again, nice little retest gap. And for an afternoon trade, I really do like these afternoon trades that have this really, really good consolidation. So again, you can see this moving average coming in to kind of press the stock higher. And uh, this is a 10 minute chart right here. So you'll notice it just kind of compressed. It trades sideways for a long period of time and the risk reward was pretty good with those moving averages that were slowly approaching. So here's the five minute chart on Dell, take some little D-E-L-L. -L. And again, as far as an afternoon trade's concerned, when you get that compression, when you get the lower shadows, this is really, really what made Blake like this trade was this candle right here. The reason he loved it after that candle came in is because when it threw in that lower shadow, you can see that people probably were trying to short it, expecting it to roll over. And that's because they wanted it to take out the low of this candle, take out the low of this candle, take out some of these other lows. It just simply did not close below that price. So you had the support line right there, you got the trap, and then you got this candle with a little bit of an upper shadow. So even on the five minute chart, the stock was holding up well, the rest of the market was more or less trending down. Dell, right, blue chip stock, dividend paying company, I believe, um, good fundamentals. This is one that Blake was like, you know what, I just gotta trade this and be in this, be in this to win this. This is the 15 minute chart on Dell, and again, just kinda get a general idea of what those candles were looking like. And the really, really pretty setup on this one was just the fact that again, this candle right here had that super small upper shadow, right? Upper shadows are important if you're shorting because if the stock breaks above that 
super small upper shadow, that means that someone was indeed trapped, right? Those upper shadows are created from selling pressure. So we'll talk about kind of how he uh, trailed his stop. So this is really 30 minutes later, and he mentioned, hey, no reason to lose on this if you're in it. So this is the 15 minute chart, and you can see again, initial stop was down there at 49.45, long entry at 50, and then he just put the stop five cents above his entry, but keep in mind, he did that after this 15 minute candle was forming. So this candle had already fully closed, right? 15 whole minutes went by, and then some other time frame, approximately another 10 minutes of trading has gone by before he moved his stop. And it's really important to kind of know and understand because as you're looking through trades, it's really, really good to see, you know, just the progression of how to trail it. And then 13 minutes later, which again is really, really important to just see the time frame for how long someone's moving these stops. 13 minutes later, he moves the stop again to lock in even more profit. Again, keeping it so that there's no way he could lose on the trade. 5170 being an ultimate target. And then again, another 15 minute candle closing. Again, just increasing the stop, which is, which is always feels good. And uh, then here, this is very nice. So now he comes into a five minute chart as it gets closer and closer to when the market actually closes, right? Increasing the stop after the selling came in, right? Because you never get out the exact high. Once the S curve comes in, moving the stop again, now on a five minute chart, just really zooming in to kind of see and determine where that's playing out. And uh, there's a little bit of a bounce right there. Right, nice resistance right before the close of market, um, and he got out for 1.7 hours. This was 2:42 in the afternoon, and so we can see coming into it, it never quite hit his target of 51.70. So the high as it got was 51.55. So he trailed that stop all the way up until pretty much close of market. So Mr. Blake Anderson, I gotta say that is pro level stuff, my friend, and I'm very excited to see your presentation on Monday at the Nashville Trading Retreat entitled, How to Be a Professional Real Life Trader for a Living, because that's what both him and I do. This guy trades for a living. That's what he does all day, every day, every month. He trades and makes money. Of course, he has other streams of income. He does other things like consulting for social media, Instagram model, you know, just your general get paid to look good makes sense to me. Why wouldn't you if you're that handsome? <laughs> but true story, you have to have it. It's absolutely okay to have other streams of income. It's not a bad thing. Don't feel bad if you're only making two or three, four hours a month, but you have other streams of income. It will get better over time. Blake Anderson used to live in Nashville where we trade together very frequently. And this guy has been doing it and has been in the game very long time now, almost almost six years, I believe. So anyway, great trade, man, beautiful stuff. I love seeing that progression, and I really, really like that entry just right above that moving average. Fantastic one to just keep a close eye on and let that pressure build, let the moving averages catch up, and let Dell pop for 1.7 hours. That is a delicious trade. Oh, and look at that beautiful support line right there drawn automatically on the screen by trendspider.com. That support line helping people get in bullish with the retest on Dell today. I'm loving this. So much goodness out there. All right, folks, for some of the other traders, I'll be hopping into the afternoon room to do Finance Friday in about three minutes and 30 seconds. Otherwise, we're going to be having an absolute party, a real hoot nanny. All weekend long, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm sure you'll be getting all kinds of videos, pictures, Instagram posts, tweets, LinkedIn's, all kinds of great stuff, folks. Our mission in real life trading is to enrich lives. Thank you for having a great August. Some of the stats for August are being posted here in real life trading. And check this one out. My girl Lee, two and a half hours for the month of August. Look at this post by Sid. I've been losing money for two years, first month joining Real Life Trading, and I'm up 3R. Come on, how much better do you want? My boy Mark, 
getting 5.29 Rs for August. And Andrew, best month I've had by far, 23 and a half Rs. So if you lost in August, which, hey, some people did, it's okay. If you lost, it's all right, lose small. That's one of the guys that you gave your money to. <laughs> Andrew Hall, well done, my man. Brad getting 1.15 Rs. And myself, yours truly, was able to snag some really good gains on Tesla Short today. Uh, Tesla Short was the big winning trade for most traders in the room. TSLA, white candle, gapping up into a resistance, hitting both the 50 EMA and the 100 SMA. Plus, this wave count helped a lot. This is one that I did the other day. And on the five minute chart, once she broke down right here, it was a waterfall. So that's when both myself, Scott McKay, Cla um, uh, how many traders took this one? Like four or five different trades. Justin Linderman was in, he got four hours on this one. Claude up there in Montreal, Canada, snagged, I think two and a half hours on Tesla. So that was a beautiful trade, really well done. Never got to my final target. And that's okay. Ended up getting trailed out, but you know, R, right at two R's of a win for me on uh, Tesla. Really nice move. So good stuff. Also had a Baba Iron Condor expiring worthless today. So I had a half an hour loss on Spy. I had uh, almost a two R gain on Tesla and 0.9 R gain on Alibaba. So for me, it's going to be right at seven R's for the month of August. And 90% of those games came in the last two days. Challenge accepted. September. Let's do it again. And until next time, love life, love life, and trade it. Bye.